People often ask me which books they should read to kickstart them on the road to red pilling. First, what do I mean by red pill? Very simply, just being exposed to the truth. For most people living in the West today, that means unlearning a lot of the things you were taught at school or at university or simply on television. Now, the best books will tell you how to think, not just what to think, but many times in conversation or debate, you'll be faced with many objections to things that are commonly held as facts by those who simply repeat what they have been told and who have stopped thinking for themselves. The books I am going to share provide you not only with ways of thinking, but also give you the blocks and the facts and the hard stats to counter just about any line of objection your normie progressive friends might throw at you. For those serious about reading, I want to give you a comprehensive start in the fight against bad ideas that have come to dominate Western politics and culture. So are you ready? (laughs) Do you know any other styles? I am very grateful. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's begin. Over my years of study, I have come to view that to get anywhere, we need to see the world as it is and not as it might be. Broadly speaking, the three key thinkers in history in this regard are Charles Darwin, Niccolò Machiavelli and Adam Smith. To red pill truly, you need to have a Darwinian view of human nature, a Machiavellian view of politics and a view of economics in the free market tradition of Adam Smith. All three of these views analyse things as they are, not as they ought to be. They also have one thing in common, a completely clear and cold-eyed view of human nature itself. This common characteristic makes them fundamentally compatible as thinkers. I see many crossover points between the three of them. However, if you are starting out, it is perhaps not the best or the easiest thing to start with Darwin, Machiavelli or Smith directly. It is perhaps easier to look at their modern interpreters. For Darwin, an excellent starting point is Steven Pinker's The Blank Slate. This book is a demolition job on what is essentially the basis of virtually all modern leftist beliefs, namely that human beings are blank slates with no intrinsic characteristics. Pinker does not leave any stone unturned, references literally hundreds of articles with hard empirical data. No one with a shred of honesty in their body could read that book and still be a social construction creationist afterwards. Now once you've read build on Darwin, it should be easier to transition to understand economics. One book that can help immensely with that transition is Matt Ridley's The Evolution of Everything, which makes the link between Darwin and Adam Smith explicit in their bottom-up, incremental, evolutionary view of the world, as opposed to a top-down, centrally planned view of the world. Ridley touches on many interesting things like how spontaneous order established itself in prison populations until it broke down in the 1970s when a mixture of diversity and reforms created conditions for gangs to develop within the prison system. Or why monogamous marriage as an institution came to be and why it overtook polygamous societies. In short, it's because low status males get to have sex and breed in one whereas in the other they are denied doing so, which spills over into violence. Or how about the Malthusian eugenicist roots of the modern environmentalist movement? Or also how about the way that the Chinese discovered capitalism within communism after Chinese farmers started resisting collectivization and when their yields were way above the quotas, local officers were wondering what the hell was going on. Instead of sending them to jail, Deng embraced it and that's how China started to liberalize after 1978. It's a very good book which would prime you for the big move to start reading books on economics. 
Now before we make that move, the ultimate red pill on political theory and your fairly modern cipher for Machiavelli is James Burnham's The Machiavellians, which should come with a warning for potential red pill overdose. In fact, it risks becoming a black pill because it is so relentless in its cold analysis of human political action. If you're interested, check out my video, The Intractable Problem of Democracy, for more. What's great about this book, also, is that Burnham talks about theorists seldom discussed, like Giattano Mosca, Robert Michels, George Sorrell, and Vilfredo Pareto. It's one of those books with stone-cold insight on practically every page. Oh, and while I'm in this section, for British viewers especially, the red pill on how Tony Blair was not a centrist but a radical utopian zealot who oversaw nothing less than a hostile leftist cultural revolution in the late 1990s, you should check out Peter Hitchens's The Abolition of Britain. Now, I don't agree with Hitchens on everything. I'm more of a classical liberal and he's more of an old school high Tory, but his analysis of what happened under Blair and how the left worked in a very, very planned and systematic way to destroy anything that was dear to the British people across education, culture and the arts and religion is spot on. The book is very eye-opening and it destroyed whatever lingering respect I had for Tony Blair. Oh, and I should also mention um, for students and younger people attracted to Rousseau, J.L. Talman's The Origins of Totalitarianism should completely dispel any love for Rousseau, who is an unremitting blue pill. Okay, on to economics, and your first stop, undoubtedly, should be Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson. This stresses the massive importance of considering long-run effects, and it importantly shows you how to think like an economist rather than with your feelings, considering only the short run. From there, you will likely want to buttress yourself with facts and arguments against the dozens of progressive myths that the economic creationists of the left perpetuate in their refusal to come to terms with reality. The book for that is this, Excuse Me Professor, edited by Lawrence W. Reed. It contains 52 short essays refuting just about every claim and argument progressives routinely make in political discussions. It is a comprehensive beatdown of a worldview that cannot stand up to scrutiny, and it has chapters by many greats such as Henry Hazlitt or Walter E. Williams. And now, if you have any lingering taint of leftism left in you, you are ready for Thomas Sowell. Now, basic economics will fill any gaps that you have beyond Hazlitt, and it is awesome, but for the total red pill, you need Sowell at his angriest with the gloves off. And that's his book, The Vision of the Anointed, which is an utter annihilation of the American left, as he shows their failures and tactics and delusions over decades. His Pattern of the Anointed is one of the most perfect critiques of the left ever written. Be prepared to have many of your long-cherished beliefs crushed here, even on things like sex education, prison reform, maps even. There's basically nothing in the leftist worldview that Sowell does not slay. Now, for those who want to be armed with hard facts beyond all of this, I'd recommend two empirical studies, Angus Madison's The Counter of the World Economy, which has so many facts and figures and is so thorough and so utterly conclusive that its very existence is an embarrassment for the left, which is why they've done all they can, as they so often do, to smear Madison. Another book along these lines is Dean and Cole's classic British Economic Growth, 1688-19, to 19. 59, which in cold, hard numbers destroys just about any argument that leftist revisionists of economic history might care to throw out. It also shows how contrary to post-colonial narratives which commit the zero-sum fallacy in assuming that Britain's wealth came from its empire, it shows how the empire was a net drain on British GDP for most of its existence, and even at its height only accounted for 7% of the overall economy. The facts aren't kind to leftist narratives in general. 
Okay, just two more books of special interest. For those worried about immigration and the future of Europe currently, Douglas Murray's The Strange Death of Europe, which I've reviewed previously on this channel, is pretty much a black pill as opposed to a red pill, but it's a superb account of how we've been lied to over the years and how elites push this on the people by explicit design. The other book worth mentioning is on geopolitics, Samuel P. Huntington's The Clash of Civilization, which is like a modern update of Arnold Toynbee or Oswald Spengler, and despite being written in the mid-1990s, more or less accurately calls how the geopolitical situation has developed in the 21st century. He was denounced and called everything by the left at the time, but his coal analysis was spot on. He was also pretty much correct in predicting both Erdogan in Turkey and Putin in Russia. A great book. And that should be enough to keep you reading for a few months. Till next time. And a very special thanks to Sir Percy Blakeney, The Crimson Sater, Nuri Nelson, Fonz Fonz Fonz, Graham Leggett, Ginger Bill, Michael Burt, Time Stealer, Blake Barrows, Charles Vincent, and Edward Darrow.